For more years than you can count, you've been a steel worker. Your friends call you Chopper, and you believe that one day you could be a top singer, like Sinatra. An unusual fact about you was flying. Perhaps you flew a helicopter. Perhaps you could just fly. Your pet peeve was cracking chewing gum, and you'd like to meet Rachel Welch. Your personal motto, make hay while the sun shines. Well, today, my friend, the sun is not shining. You're most proud of your children, and your reputation in high school was that you were good. Three words people used to describe you were short, fat, funny. You were chopper, but then everything changed. You became a middle-aged woman. You found yourself in a house in the basement, and things were strange. This is the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Your name is Vivian Lopez, and you've just cracked a vault, though you'll always think of yourself as chopper. In the vault, you found a strange candle that seems to be um, make shadows move and whatnot, and an amulet of the ages. How you knew it was of the ages, I do not know. They go well with your lucky rabbit's foot, but will your luck hold out as you continue to explore the basement alone? An underground lake. What's around your ankle? A bug? A tentacle? A dead hand clawing? You must attempt a speed roll. Six. You break free. It appears as though your luck is holding out. For now. Your name is Kevin O, but you've started to become accustomed to being called Flash. When you picked up the spear from the charred remains of a spear holder in the charred room, you felt a, a little bit of foreboding, and you rolled the dice, and a haunt began. But you're too good of a guy, aren't you? You would never betray your fellow humans. It must be someone else. Someone else has turned to the dark, embraced it, allowed the shadows of the house to seep into their very soul, and caused them to change. But who? Your name is Sackbutt. You are a journalist. You had the secret fantasy to play the trombone like Tra Kristen Lindbergh. An unusual fact was your crooked toe. A crooked toe that drove you to madness. Your pet peeve was pencils without erasers. You'd like to meet your maker. A personal motto you held dear was everything in moderation. Well, that motto has changed. You were most proud of your bohemian ways. Your reputation in high school was band, comma, orchestra member. Three words that describe you were musical, impulsive, creative. And you always loved dragons, didn't you? You always wished for their fierce power, their strength, the flame that could come from their their mouth just like the flame of a trumpet's blast. The way it could sear the ears of your listeners, you wish you could sear the flesh from their bones. We're going to have a spoiler alert here. We're about to do haunt number 15. So if you um, are interested in experiencing haunt number 15 for the first time via playing the game, you might want to stop um, for the rest of this the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament series because you might learn secrets that could um, spoil your enjoyment of Haunt number 15, There Be Dragons, or something about dragons it's called. All right. You've been warned. You've been warned! You remember it clearly, don't you, how Sackbutt stooped, picked up a scrap of paper from the floor, then mumbled something you couldn't quite hear. Before you could ask, you recall, sack but what it is, the front door bursted open. An enormous dragon roared in, rampaging and snorting fire. Sack but frowned, then points, pointed right at you, yelling, Eat em, dragon! Eat em all! Rawr! 
Things were so much easier when you were a travel agent, weren't they? Your name was Sid. You had the secret fantasy to marry Mel Gibson. You could flip your tongue upside down, and, but you hated driving in traffic. You wanted to meet Tom Cruise. Your personal motto was shut up. You were most proud of your waist. Your reputation in high school was someone who liked to skip classes. Three words that described you were sweet, smart, cute. You felt powerful. You felt like life was fun. You could do whatever you wanted to. You were young, but old enough to have, to be free of, of restriction. And then things changed. You found yourself in this horrible house as a little girl named Zoe. And below, you could feel below your feet. You can feel the floorboards tremble as you are aware there's a dragon in the main entranceway to the house. And the only way that you can protect yourself from the dragon is to obtain special magical armor which is in the basement. And the only way to the basement is guarded by the dragon. Your name is Sweet Pea, and you have a madman all but drooling over your shoulder. You know why Chomp Chomp wants to lick you, Sweet Pea? You ignore him and try to make your way out. You need to get to the basement. There's, there's, you have to find another way. First, you must attempt a might roll of three plus. You succeed. Did you find a way into the basement? No, you found a way into the gardens. I am under the floor, buried under the floor. The voice whispers once, then is gone. Is it the madman playing games? You must attempt a knowledge roll. Three. You dig and search for the voice, but to no avail. Chompy, chompy, once you down in the ground. Chompy, chompy, chompy. You are Sid, and you are trapped. Alone in the upstairs, you desperately f try to find a way out. A way, possibly, via an, a magic elevator or something, that you can get to the basement and, and away from the dragon. Instead, you find a research laboratory, and the room is covered in a thick layer of dirt. You cough as it gets on your skin and in your lungs. You fail your might roll. Something is wrong. You keep this card. Take one point of physical damage until you get to some certain special rooms. That's really bad. Before we continue, a bit of information with regard to the tournament, just so we have everything um, cleared away and set straight before um, any disastrous results happen. So there's a couple of different ways this game can end. Um, if the heroes win and there's multiple heroes still alive, those heroes will go on to play Fearsome Floors to see who advances. Um, into Throne World and Time Agent. Okay, if the heroes win and only one hero is alive, that hero will advance. If the traitor wins and the traitor is still alive, then the traitor will advance. If the traitor wins and the traitor is dead, I think, I'm not sure what will happen. Maybe, I don't think they'll all play Fearsome Floors. They might either play this game again or play a completely different game. So, um, there's kind of three, I think, different possible outcomes. Um, hopefully the, the traitor doesn't die and win. Well, actually, it might be fun to come up with something new. So those are the cases. Um, so, uh, interesting positioning with people. I'm excited to get back to the game. So I'm going to stop talking to you now. Your name is Snugbug, and you've never been more afraid. You're used to being comfortable, master of your lodge, both at home and in your external social life. But here you are in the dining room on the ground floor, the traitor but a mere three rooms away, with his dragon close at hand. Your destination is this coal chute right here, which is four spaces away. However, you are a slow old man, and in this crickety old body, so accustomed to comfort, you're not accustomed to move quickly. And so you have a choice to make. Do you try to work your way towards the coal chute and hope the dragon passes you by? Do you run towards the traitor and attempt to pummel him with your elderly fists, hoping that your dog can help you bring him down? Or do you remain stationary and hope that your out-of-the-way location keeps the dragon at bay?
Your name is Kevin O, and you are a warrior. The dragon is moving towards you. You do not back away. You charge. <laughs> Your total is six, seven, eight, ten. The dragon retaliates. The total is six, eight, nine, ten. Nothing happens. Your name is Sweet Pea and you are in the dark. Dark alone with a madman who is all but drooling over your shoulder. In the distance you hear roars, thumps, some sort of battle is raging on, but here you are in total blackness with this madman all but drooling over your shoulder. Your name is Snugbug and the time to move is at hand. The little boy guards the way to the coal chute. The dragon is otherwise occupied. The way to the upstairs and the little girl who is still all alone and probably frightened is open. One, two, three, you move, heading your way towards the stairs to become her safety. Perhaps you never knew, or perhaps your head was stuck in comfort for too long, but dragons breathe fire. You try to get out of the wave of the flames, but no. You are charred, and all but ready to fall. Flash also tries to get out of the way. He's far quicker than you and manages to run around the dragon to safety. The dragon strikes. Trying to bite off the, the swiftly running around to safety flash. Kevin O. Williams. Two, six, ten, twelve. Dragon. Ah! Four, six, seven, yow! Your name is Kevin O, and you once were a warrior. And so the first has fallen. It's not looking good for the heroes here. This fellow here, uh, Snugbug, is also almost gone. Let's take a look at where everyone else is. We have our little girl, uh, what's her name, Sid? Sid, yeah, in the upstairs. It's kind of harder to f remember their names uh, using this method of filming. Um, uh, upstairs, not doing a lot. She got the, the horrible dirt off of her, however. Then we have Sweet Pea over here with the madman. She, um, you know, she has some potential if, if she wasn't in the dark, but... You know, her only way back is through the dragon. She can explore around, though, and maybe find something to help. Um, the most promising individual is probably, almost definitely, Chopper down in the basement. Um, not only is he, she in the basement where the armor and the shield are, um, but she also has quite a number of interesting items that are helpful. Or he does, or she, I'll say he, um, that are helpful. Um, the, the, it's, it's pretty bad that the, the spear is here, though, because if little boy um, Sackbutt decides to go and pick it up, then, you know, that's going to be very difficult for the heroes to defeat the dragon. It's the main offensive weapon against the dragon, who is quite fierce, as you maybe have noticed. 